Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, and I am joined by Jeff Berwick, who is the founder and chief editor of the Dollar Vigilante. You also started Stockhouse.com back in 1994, and you have since sold it. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Bridget. When we last spoke last January, you weren't very optimistic about the global economy. What would you say about the state of the economy now? Uh, I can't believe the changes in the last year. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, when I first started writing The Dollar Vigilante in about 2009, I thought, what am I going to write about every day? And now there's 10, 20 things to write about every single day. This, this system is in collapse and it's, it's unbelievable and most people don't even see what's going on. So what are the top things that are grabbing your attention right now? Mostly, uh, it's how the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve are reacting to all the problems. So you look at Paul Krugman. In the last year, he's come up with two plans, and he writes for the New York Times. His first plan was fake and alien invasion. <laughs> and he said, what, what will happen is that everyone will create guns to fight aliens, and that will boost our economy. That didn't really work out. And then he said, well, let's make a, a coin and make it worth a trillion dollars. We're in the last days of this financial system in the U.S. This is Zimbabwe. Talk to me about more about that because there's a lot of people out there that say, you know, things are starting to turn around. Yeah, the if you watch CNBC, if you actually pay attention to the U.S. media, uh, they will always tell you there's uh, green shoots or it's uh, it's going to be a recovery. Mm -hmm. There's no chance of that. You don't think there are any signs of that? There's no. It's not possible. The what? U.S. government is now 40% of the GDP of the U.S. Uh, there's more people, there's one in four people, on f uh, children on food stamps in the U.S. right now. One in six Americans are on food stamps. Uh, the, there's so much debt, uh, so much uh, government involvement in the economy. Uh, there's 11 states in the U.S. now that have more people on welfare than who have jobs. And you don't think that the U.S. government can turn this around? It's not possible. Government can never help anything. And the U.S. government is actually showing now that uh, it really just hurts everything. And this ship is going down. This is the USSR in 1989. That seems a bit dramatic. I hate to uh, bring uh, the truth so honestly and so outspoken and I'm sure the people on CNBC uh, don't want to hear this. Well lots of people would, wouldn't believe you. They'd say, you know what, you're out in left field. You're nuts. They would have said the same thing in 1989 with the Soviet Union. There were so many people who were still talking about, oh this, that's a great, the communism is going to work. When this, when it starts to collapse, it's going to happen very fast. We're not there yet. I believe it'll be a few more years. But uh, if people don't start to wake up to what's going on, they're going to get hurt in this collapse. All right, so that's your thought about the U.S. economy. What do you see happening globally then? Globally? Mm -hmm. Well, most of the world is uh, Western-based. A lot of the uh, Europe disaster, <laughs> U.S., Canada, Australia, Japan, who also bought into these uh, Keynesian central banking planning. Japan, I think, is going to be the first to fall. Uh, not many people know this. Japan uh, used to have massive surpluses uh, in trade. Uh, after Fukushima, they uh, shut down most of their nuclear plants. Devastated their economy. Mm -hmm. Totally. And it also meant they're now a net importer. They also have a very aging population, very xenophobic uh, population. Uh, and the new uh, president or prime minister, whatever they call the top criminal in, in Japan, has now said, that they're going to uh, try to inflate as much as possible. And I, I really believe that the yen is going to be one of the first to fall. So you obviously have very strong beliefs. How do those beliefs shape the way that you approach your financial, the, the markets and your, your financial behavior and attitude? Well, my, my beliefs aren't strong. They're just what I believe. And mm -hmm. uh, I say what, I, uh, what I'm seeing. And uh, most of the things you see on TV today are not real. We've actually lived in a completely false economy now for 40 years, since 1971. Ever since they took the gold backing away from the dollar, we've lived in a complete fairy tale economy. Uh, almost everyone here probably has a car. They probably don't own it. It's probably leased. They probably have a house. They say they own it. It's probably a huge mortgage. It's a debt-based economy. 
And there's, that's not the way to run an economy. And we're nearing the very end of this. So once again, then, how does that shape the way that you approach your, your own financial portfolio? Oh, me personally, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very important. Uh, I really believe that we have to be, this is the most dangerous time in human history for capital, in my opinion. Uh, you have to be very safe. You shouldn't be going out there looking for big gains right now. You should just be trying to retain what you have. And how do you do that then? How do you do that? A big part of it is just precious metals. Uh, own gold and silver, but don't just own them in your own country. Uh, your own government is going to be your biggest enemy in the, in the future. As these uh, nation states collapse, they always try to take as much as they can from their own tax slaves. So you diversify your holdings, and yes. are there any jurisdictions that you avoid? The biggest jurisdiction that I avoid is the U.S. <laughs> That's going to be uh, ground zero for this economic collapse. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, Galt's Gulch. This is a community that you're building in Chile. Tell me about it. Yeah, this evolved all organically. Uh, we've been talking about what's going on. There's a lot of people who understand what we're talking about. Uh, Ayn Rand wrote Atlas Shrugged, uh, which uh, talked about Galt's Gulch. And what happened in, in Atlas Shrugged was uh, a lot of the world became socialist, communist, fascist, and all the productive people went to one place and they just tried to escape it all. And uh, we've actually created that uh, vision of Ayn, Ayn Rand in Chile. So this is, is it an anarchist community then? Uh, it, I'm an anarchist. Uh, not everyone who's going to be there is an anarchist, but almost everyone who will go there will be definitely libertarian. They, they, they will believe in liberty. They will believe that you don't use force and violence and theft and uh, in theory, it sounds great, but do you not need laws in place when you have a community of people? That's a great question. That's a big question that anarchists always get asked. Mm. It's not that anarchists don't believe in law. We just don't believe in forced law. We, we believe in not being uh, forced to uh, give up our money or to uh, adhere to abstract ideas, like don't have this flower or plant in your pocket called marijuana or okay. will kidnap you and put you in a cage. Uh, we, we just believe in voluntarism. We believe in a, in a truly peaceful world. So how far in, around in development are you? We've just started. We started about three months ago. And how big do you expect this to be? It's looking like it's going to be massive. So is this your plan in the event of a, some sort of economic collapse? It's evolved that way. I don't really, I, I'm not a big planner. Uh, I just uh, react to how the world is, uh, but this is where it's going, uh, that we have to now just get as far away from the U.S. and from the Western world uh, because this collapse is going to be messy. So you put pretty much the Western world in with the U.S. then? Yeah, totally. They're, they're all the same. Uh, I was explaining to you earlier, uh, even Canada, where we are right now, uh, the Canadian government sold almost all their gold in the 1980s. Now all that's back in the Canadian dollar is the U.S. dollar. 90% uh, of trade in Canada is with the U.S. Yet so when the Canada US, has a lot of natural resources to draw upon. And I believe the U.S. government at some point will probably just come and take it. That's a very extreme belief. So what are your next steps then? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just going to do what I think is right. I'm going to think rationally. Uh, I'm going to react to the world around me. Uh, I'm not a big planner, as I told you, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking it for investors, for people here at a Cambridge show, you have to be a little bit more uh, uh, safe than taking risks at, at this moment in time. Jeff, thanks very much. Always an interesting discussion. It's my pleasure, Richard.